from Orlando, Florida, it's FPB Late Night. Tonight, our special guest is Skadoosh, and your host, Cappuccino. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming to this episode of FPV Late Night. I am your host, Cappuccino, and tonight we have a guest coming all the way from China, and he's not even Chinese. Welcome, David Skadoosh. <laughs> welcome, David. Hey, buddy. How are you doing? Long time, no smell. Yeah, it's been like... Well, I mean, I saw you earlier right, out right, in the but, lobby. But I mean, but you know. Prior to that, it was with uh, Drew. In China, when yeah. we were flying, yeah. So did the staff get you anything to drink? They did not, see, oh. see. Actually, I had to go get my own sandwich. I had to do my own makeup. Drew wouldn't even let me use his eyeliner, so. Well, that's understandable. Yeah, it's But you don't share your goggles, do you? No, no, I don't yeah. share chapstick, so I can understand. Yeah, but it's, he, it's exactly the but same But he would have used my chapstick if I had let him. I bet he would. You know what? Nobody yeah. told me my Living. background was it. Thank, thank you guys. We have a whole audience and nobody said anything. Yeah, let's play the background. So let's, let's get the background moving. So that's your flying right there. That is me. So we first met when I came to China yes. and we went to the uh, Bando Island. The epic Bando Island. That is like internationally, worldwide known now from that Episode. From that episode. What's funny is that episode was actually more popular than the Great Wall of China. Crazy. Yes. And now, like, people come all the time. They message me on Facebook or whatever. Hey, we're coming to Suzhou just to fly with you at Bando Island. So how many times have you gone to Bando Island with newcomer FPV FPVers? FPVers? <laughs> FPVers. You know, I'm not even sure. I had the guys from Columbia come, I had a guy from Scotland come, guys from Hong Kong, guys from all so over the world. So it has become quite popular. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think what's really interesting to me is, and don't take this the wrong way, no. but a guy like you in a little town in China, and what I mean is an awesome guy like you, in a little town in China. No, how does that happen? A little town of 10 million. Well, yeah, but that's a little town in China. The company I was working for, I got sent there from that company to correct some things that were going wrong with the production. They sent me over for two weeks, get now, everything back online. Can you talk about online. what you do? Sure, absolutely. So production of what? Small electric utility vehicles, okay. like Cushman type things. Most of our contracts, it's like a like golf, golf cart on steroids. Okay, so like but most mega of our, golf carts. Yeah, most of our contracts are like Disney World, Sheridan Resorts, Westgate. So you went over there for work? I went over there for work, spent two weeks. When I flew back, they were so happy with what I did over there. They said, hey, you want to just move to China and run the factory? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just didn't have and anything better going on? Didn't have anything time. better going on at the time because of, of where I was in life. So did you move over there and then get into FPV or were you into FPV? Actually, prior? I started it over there. Okay. And that's, I was at a temple one time, you know, and I saw a guy flying a DJI around this temple. Uh -huh. And I didn't know, even know what a DJI, you know, this was like 2014. Was he a monk? No. Oh, I got a funny story. The monks story were about out there. Mm, check it out. And I was like, that's pretty cool. You know, I wonder how long, you know, I'm not, I didn't, at that time, I was only on a one year contract, but I was like, that's pretty cool. I need to grab one of those and take pictures of like all this cool stuff I'm seeing for later when I go back, mm -hmm. whatever. And I had no clue. I was walking around downtown one time and I see this kid flying a SEMA X5 out in front of a shop. And I'm like, maybe that's the same thing. It's got a camera on it. Right. So I bought it, you know, $40, whatever. It was, all the instructions were in Chinese, so mm -hmm. I lost like four of them before I learned how to fly the thing. And at that time, I didn't have a VPN either, so I had no YouTube, no access. So what? finally, when I figured out how to get through and get YouTube, I found like Quadcopter 101, a couple different things, you know, after I lost four of them, flyaways, whatnot, whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the ending. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, so anyway, that led into the flight test days. Uh -huh. and, um, so you used to watch flight tests? Absolutely. Oh, I was wow. a huge fan of flight tests. And I saw the, um, when Bixler went down to Sarasota, where mm -hmm. I'm from, the Fly Like Sharpoo video. Right. And they had Sharpoo in the park, and we're flying around the park, and I said, that's Gillespie Park, that's right by my house. 
You know? So you're like, I could do that. Yeah, well, I put two and two together and figured out that Lumineer Get FPV was like right down the street from my house. I went in and that's when it was the small shop and I met Tim and I think Kevin and worked there back then. And then you got sponsored? And then I got sponsored by them down was the road. Was it seriously that soon? No, it wasn't then. Oh, okay. So how do you like being sponsored? For, for me, for me, I guess it's a little different than some sponsorships because I can afford my own gear. Mm -hmm. It's not like I need to. Wait, so you're saying FPV pilots are poor? No, that is not That's what, what I, I heard mean. you say. That is not what I mean. I'm kidding. What I'm saying is, is I'm not locked in to have to use certain gear mm -hmm. because if I, you know, if I crash this, I can't afford to rebuild one or I can't afford to rebuild one, you know, or I can pick and choose what I want to right. use. Yeah. I, I would say it's more a very frugal lines. crowd. So it's not like I'm forced into using their gear and promoting their stuff in order for me to continue to get stuff from them. It doesn't matter either way. I'm sponsored with them and work with them because I like what they do. As a matter of fact, you can afford to build your own because Boom. you designed your own frame. I did. And I did. you sent me one. Uh, but I haven't actually, fl I've only hovered it because I had a, a bad motor and I burn out the ESC and I have not been able to replace it yet. So, so unfortunately I have not built it yet, but I'm curious of your assessment of my build. I love did it. I, did I do it well? It is absolutely beautiful. And I like that you use the slam too, because a lot of people stay away from the slam nowadays with mm -hmm. the foreign ones. They can't get a stack in there. Yeah, I really wanted to keep it as low as, as possible. Because like you saw, you can do it either way. It comes with two sets of cheeks, so you can mm -hmm. do the high deck or the low deck and two sets of standoffs, so you can do it either way. But what I was really impressed with, and, I, and I'll be honest, when I first got it, I'm like, oh, great, another frame, you know, that looks slightly different than the others but what i was impressed with was the build and the layout the build was super easy you can tell i mean i i love that you have you have three screws for the top plate yet it's still very firm it locks into the front plates i like that a lot so i am excited to fly this because it, and you know what that was my whole thing behind that frame i wanted something super stupid simple mm -hmm. like you can just look at it and know how to build it so is it, in, it's not in production though, right? No, nope, but it will be soon. From, How soon? I'm not sure yet. I'm just gonna hand this over to somebody and let them run with it. Uh -huh. You know, I, I don't- well, What's your goal yeah. with this? What do you, what do you want to accomplish with this? I want people to have a stupid, easy, tough frame to build. The sense of pride of saying, hey, I helped that person get in the air. Exactly, that's with it. As few that's all I want, with as few we... headaches as possible. You don't need a GoPro mount. You don't have to think about it. It's all 10 millimeter screws. You just stick it together, strap your GoPro on and go. So the name of this is? The Skadoosh. Okay, so you're going with your pilot name sure. for, the, for the frame name. So that brings me to my next question. How'd you get your pilot name? That's, that's a great story. Before I had the name Skadoosh, I was, I was posting under the name Guelo, which means white devil in Chinese, ah. in Southern Chinese, because I was the, the white guy in China, and that's like a common you, saying over there. Look at the Guelo, look yeah. at the Lao Wei. Well, we had went and seen um, Kung Fu Panda, uh -huh. And my son and I were running around giving each other the, the mushy finger hold of death. Uh -huh. And the rules were if you got the clean pinky tap, you had to freeze for 10 seconds. No okay. matter where we were, in the subway, in the store. So, you know, you're walking through the grocery store and he could sneak up on me. That's an uncomfortable amount of time. Yes. And you, people are looking, you know, only white guy in the store. And he's weird. <laughs> yeah, he's weird. He's frozen. What's going on right. here? At yeah. that time, people were just starting to subscribe to my channel. And I was like, you know, I needed to do something a little more, a more popular, more friendly, a more grab you name. Not everybody's gonna know what Guelo means. Right. That was exactly at the time that I was looking to change my name. And as we were messing with it, my wife said, why don't you just use Skadoosh? You guys have been running around yelling Skadoosh for three days. Right. Yeah, and it's that's perfect. How, and that's, that's how what happened. Yep. Nice, nice. Well, thank you for uh, taking your, your time in the US and coming and it's visiting It's my pleasure, us. my friend, always. Did you get to fly today? Absolutely. Who'd you fly And with? yesterday, with Drew, of course. And just Drew? Uh, with Drew, oh, Robert couldn't make it because he couldn't get a ride. Uh -oh. And Tac, Tac came and picked me up this morning, but I did fly with Robert yesterday, and Robert is amazing. But Tac came and picked me up, we hit a couple parks, we had Jamie, we had Drew, we had Nick with us. Nice. We had a ball, well, as I'm, always. I'm glad you got to fly in your home state. Um, when do you head back to China? Next week, okay. because I come in the summer and pick my son up and fly him to China every summer oh, wow. for his summer vacation deal. I take him out to the Great Wall and see That's all this stuff. That's got to be a crazy yeah, it's awesome. trip. 
for that's my how old only is he? he will be 16 next month but oh, wow. i've been doing this Betty loves since that. i've been over there so he was like 13 12 the first time he came over wow again i want to thank you for coming on always a pleasure it's my been friend great and i want to thank you guys at home for joining us and uh stay tuned we're going to have one of these episodes every week and i want to thank taco bell for creating great food <laughs> <laughs> what, what? For their tacos? Yeah, for their tacos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us next time on FPV Late Night. Oh, maybe it was.